Okay, so the Erwin build is out for heroes and generals, and one of the first things I'll talk about is the updated spawn system. Instead of everyone having the same generic respawn timer, that timer will now determine on a number of factors, which include uh, your primary weapon, secondary weapon, uh, items you're carrying in your kit, such as grenades, mines, etc., and also the proximity to um, the rest of your squad. And since I'm on the subject of gear, the next major update to the game has been to the character slots or soldier slots themselves. Each soldier can carry a specific amount of gear. That's represented by white dots that are in the top right corner next to that soldier. You can see here that my infantry player has 10 available slots. That includes paratroopers and light machine gunners as well. The sniper gets 6 slots while fighter pilots and tankers only get 5. This is significant because each item that a soldier carries takes up a specific number of slots. For instance, an M1 Garand will take up 5 slots, your sidearm will take up 2, as well as grenades and then a melee weapon such as the shovel or knife will take up one slot. This will require players to think much more carefully about which items that they need on the battlefield. Perhaps the best example of this is a recon class. With a sniper rifle taking up four of the six available slots, it forces players to choose between taking a sidearm which will help them in close quarters battle or choosing between grenades or perhaps mines that will help barricade them within a position. Ultimately, I like this new feature, and we'll have to see how it plays out as more and more weapons and equipment are added to the game. With that being said, unfortunately, we've only seen two of the new weapons get released with this Erwin build. That's the Gewehr 43, the semi-auto rifle for the Axis side, and then the unscoped 1903 Springfield for the Allied side. They've also made a lot of really nice improvements to the HUD. You can see with the white font, it looks a lot cleaner, and it's also got a much better layout. To the left is the health meter, which now reads in percentages. The health still operates the same as it did before. Now a new feature is a sprint bar, which is below that. That white bar will diminish as you use your sprint, and your sprint will be affected by the weapon that you're carrying. You can see that in the character menu. The more equipment and heavier weapon you take, the sprint meter will go down faster. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see the new ammunition layout as well. Now they've introduced a new currency to the game called War Funds, and this is credits that are used specifically to resupply assault teams. Now I don't know a ton about this new feature, but it sounds like players will be able to resupply ammunition, perhaps vehicles, and maybe even spawn tickets to their assault team. As I said, I don't really know a whole lot about this new feature, so perhaps I'll touch on that at a later time. Another thing I want to mention is that it seems like they fixed a lot of the bugs with the sound. Initially when I played the game I could only play in stereo mode because if I had it in any surround sound I could not hear my primary weapon firing as well as other sounds seemed to be glitched in the game. Ever since this new update my surround sound seems to be working with all the weapons so far. Graphically they've made some improvements as well. I know they've updated some of the weapon textures as well as taken care of some of the graphical glitches although there are still plenty that remain. One of these graphical improvements you'll probably notice right off the bat is a shower of sparks that is sometimes emitted after a bullet impacts certain objects. And it actually does look pretty cool. For instance, if you're lighting up a vehicle with your uh, light machine gun and sparks are just flying all over the place. We've got some footage of night gameplay where you should see this pretty well. Now with all these new improvements, there are still a few issues that I think really need to be taken care of. For instance, a big one is the clipping issue that players have around trees. Well, if you're taking cover behind a tree, you'll have a clear line of sight on an enemy, and then when you go to shoot, your bullet impacts an invisible layer of this tree. But at the same time, that player somehow seems to be able to shoot through that layer and kill you. This can be extremely frustrating when you think you have the jump on the player, and then you give away your position by sending a burst of bullets into an invisible tree, he turns, and then shoots you in the face. Another major issue that I have is players' inability to run directly up a hill or sloped rooftop. Instead, players are forced to awkwardly jump their way up these obstacles, but at the same time, you cannot be moving forward and jump at the same time. Instead, you just kind of get stuck in place. This is extremely frustrating and it's gotten me killed a large number of times. I often find myself and other players struggling for minutes just to get up a seemingly insignificant little hill. The final one of my sort of major issues with the game is still the spawn camping that you encounter a lot in the skirmish game mode. I really think this needs to be addressed in order to make that game mode a more enjoyable and balanced experience. Now despite some of these still lingering issues, everyone must keep in mind that this is the beta, and ultimately I think that this game is heading in the right direction. 
And I've mentioned before, if you're not a part of the game's forums, you really should join. The developers are constantly reading that, so if you want to post what you like, what you don't like, what you want to improve, issues that you're having with the game, join the forums. It's also a great place to get news and updates on what's coming out, what's being worked on, what's being fixed, etc. Now I've said this before, but if you are enjoying some of these gameplays and you haven't tried this game out for yourself, just go and download it. It's free at the Heroes and Generals website, and it's, I think it takes out less than a gig of your hard drive, so I mean, there's really not an excuse to, to not try this game. And as far as my channel is concerned, I've slowly been building a, a fan base that really centers around this game. So if there's you know something you want me to touch base on, whether it's you know a weapon review or a certain type of gameplay, you know, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, I really appreciate you know everyone that watches my videos. Um, you know, if you if you like my content, um, go ahead and you know leave a like and a subscribe or favorite one of my videos. Um, all that stuff really helps and you know helps motivate me to keep moving forward and uh, making these videos. Also, you know, if you do enjoy the content, go ahead and subscribe because I'll be continuing to put out more and more um, content for Heroes and Generals and a few other games as well. Um, I'm working on some Arma 2 um, cinematic stuff. Uh, once Arma 3 gets a few more updates, I'll get back into that game. I also play a lot of DayZ, and uh, a few of my buddies and I uh, are also kind of building a server together, and we're working on that now. Um, so once once that gets up and running, I'll probably be playing a lot more DayZ, and uh, that's something that you know anyone that's viewing will be able to join and get in on that server as well. So that's some pretty exciting news. So again, you know, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll uh, see you in the next video.